Foxcolorado.com's Five Minutes of Fame. This week we're putting the spotlight on Denver band American Relay. Alex and Nick, welcome guys. Hi. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Yeah. How's it going? Good. So tell us a little bit about your music. What's, uh, what's American Relay all about? Just roots rock and roll band, you know, based off a lot of uh, kind of old blues artists and, and kind of just making it a little more modern. <laughs> So what's the difference between Delta Blues and regular blues? For the well, average listener? I don't know if there's such thing as regular blues. Uh, Delta, just from the Mississippi Delta, kind of the origins of the blues come from there. More country style, you know, not, not that kind of Chicago, B.B. King, Albert King style. Just a little bit dirtier, a little bit more front porch. Yeah, not as pretty. You know, I think it kind of comes down to just the rhythms involved as well. You know, where Delta Blues is a little more faster droning mm -hmm. and, uh, less less you know showcasing the musicianship and more about the songwriting and the, the words and um, just a simpler form I guess you know because we look up to a lot of artists like R.L. Burnside who is an artist that died in uh, I think 2004 mm -hmm. one of the last of the kind of Mississippi Hill Hill Blues guys that was more of a punk had a punk rock kind of an edge but really fast and dirty blues so kind of look up to him as an influence so how did you guys find your sound together? Uh, it took us a while, you know, after not being able to find a bass player or you know, another guitar player or anybody else to play with, really, uh, we decided to stick with the two-piece and uh, actually saw a, uh, a show at the Bluebird with uh, some of those old Mississippi blues guys, and uh, they were two-piece bands, so it uh, kind of inspired us to, you know, give that a whirl, and it ended up working, so... And it kind of ended up being exactly what we wanted to do. So. Nice. So how long have you been together as a duo, as a uh, two-piece? About three years. How'd you guys meet? We were going to school at CU Denver in uh, probably like 2003. And we were both in like the music industry studies program. I was going for audio engineering, and he was going for music business, which he ended up not doing. And uh, he just posted an ad. Yeah, not do having, a couple. You know, yeah. kind of feeling out playing with people I always wanted to play in a band but really never was interested in what people were doing and so he posted an ad that kind of spoke to me as far as not wanting to play in a jam band not wanting to play in an indie rock band and you know listing his influences which were more blues and punk and which was right where I was you know enjoying a lot of music at that time in that genre so kind of so what did the ad say drummer looking for yeah, something to do, I think. Yeah, and, and the, his list of what he didn't want to do were larger than what he did want to do, so mm -hmm. I think that was... Yeah. <laughs> the jam band's called me anyway. Yeah, jam band's still <laughs> called anyways. There's just, there just seems to be an endless supply of those these days, so... Yep, looks good. We're ready for Alex. So what artists out there are you listening to right now? Well, I think it's a great day in American Roots music. You know, there's a lot of new artists out there that I think are kind of uh, reinvigorating the, the, the genre. Um, Scott Byram out of Austin, Texas. He's a one-man band. He's amazing. Um, there's a band out of Indiana called Reverend Peyton's Big Damn Band. Um, washboard, really Appalachian kind of style blues, but really, really fast and fun and just... You know what it should be, which is just dance music. You know, um, no, what else you listen to? I don't know. I can't get a, I can't get enough of the new uh, Go Go Bardello record. Yeah. Listen to that a lot. Gypsy punks. Then there's a local artist, Reverend Dead Eye, who's been doing the kind of uh, gospel blues here in Denver for a while now, and he's just an amazing person to be around. You know, he's he's the real deal. So, being a part of the Denver music scene, what can you say about? The scene in general. It's a good place to be around right now. You know, I think there's a lot of really good bands, a lot of really good venues. Um, there's a lot, of, just a lot of bands. So, you know, I think it's taken us a long time to kind of 
separate ourselves from some of the other bands around here. Um, but you know, I think it's 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 getting better. You know, I think there's more national attention coming, and uh, you know, it's a good time. Good time to be around here. We played the Denver Post Underground Music Showcase earlier this month, and it was a really good event that kind of exemplified what was what was really good about the musical community in Denver. It just brought a lot of good people together. Some of the best bands that we've ever been a part of. You know. yeah. There is a good community, too, yeah. with bands. You know. um, tend to support each other, and, you know, just, it's a good scene, but uh, it's, uh, it's still uh, a small market out here, so. Still in the middle of nowhere, so. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking mm, hopefully more Denver bands will break out of here and just get on the road because it is in the middle of nowhere. So, The Tarments are the greatest rock and roll band of Denver's history, I believe. They're just amazing, unique, rocking. I've been really plugging hot, at it for 10 years. Really hot bass player. <laughs> um, you know, uh, Black Lamb is another great band. It's been around for a while. Um, some of the newer bands like Ghost Buffalo are, are doing some really cool stuff. The Mighty Machine Gun Blues. Mighty Machine Gun Blues. Hell of a show. You know, I think it, Denver's always been kind of a roots music town, whether it's Slim Cessna or Munley and Lee Lewis Harlots or the 16 Horsepower. Those bands have been, have been recognized nationally for a long time now, and so we're kind of trying to tie back into that and keep it alive. So. Plus, there's only two of us. Yeah. So that tends to impress people for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you guys become a duo? I know you touched on this before, but... Uh, lack of anyone else. We're really hard to work with, you know? <laughs> well, actually, by the time we started writing songs and kind of finding our sound and all that, the songs kind of wrote themselves around not having a bass. So... You know, the drums definitely do a lot of syncopation, and throwing a bass player in there was really hard when we were trying people out, because bass player was always trying to figure out what the heck I was doing, and, you know, I didn't really want to change what I was doing, so. It's either hard to work with right there. You know? Yeah, it can be a little hard to work with, I suppose. It's also use of utilizing some, I guess, quote-unquote technology, which, you know, his drum kit's a 1972 Ludwig drum kit which is very revered and you know fills a lot of the, the sound out you know mm -hmm. and I play through a guitar amp and a bass amp as well so there's definitely some smoke and mirrors involved in doing that so we've kind of gotten better at doing that so especially since we're not very talented when it yeah. comes down to it <laughs> that's why we had to go to be blues band. lots yeah. of smoke and mirrors <laughs> yeah exactly 